Hi guys, Mark here with Walter's World, and we're in Ravenna, Italy, basically the Byzantine blast. After you've had your rebirth with the Renaissance in Florence, and your goody-goody goo-goo eyes of Gothic and Siena, in central Italy, this is the place to go to see Byzantine architecture, Byzantine churches, the mosaics. It is an amazing city to check out. I'm here with my family. What's great about this town is you have a lot of history. I mean, guys, there's like seven or eight UNESCO World Heritage places here, as well as just a little bit down the road, you have beaches. So you can kind of get the best of both worlds, relaxing at the beach with a few drinks, as well as some of the most amazing Byzantine mosaics you can find in Western Europe. Okay, so today's video is the top 10 things that you should come and see when you come here to Ravenna. Basically, 10 things to see and do, what you should eat, things like that, okay? Now, the first thing you want to come check out is, you see this church behind me? This is inside San Vitale, Basilica San Vitale, Nesco World Heritage. There's the dome. But, what you really want to look at are these frescoes on the sides. Inside the San Vitale Basilica. But she was very smart. But I think she was a sign of this woman. You know, your professor, your teacher is now trying to. This is Basilica di San Vitale. Basically, this is the most important church in town. If you come to one place on all the UNESCO sites, this is where you want to come because it's kind of a complex. There's the, the basilica with its amazing mosaics inside. I mean, it's from the 500s, okay? Also, attached to it, you have the Museo Nazionale, so you have the pottery and the sarcophagi and all kinds of other stuff that's there. So I'll, I'll make that number one. The San Vitale Basilica, as well as the Museo Nazionale. And then the second thing you should see, which is also attached to it, if you look through there, you have the Mausoleo di Gala Placidia. Basically, this is an amazing woman, you know, the mother of emperors and wives of emperors and sisters of emperors. She was, she was a little bit of everything. Uh, she's part of the reason why you have all these really great Byzantine mosaics and stuff like that here in Ravenna. And it's really, her mausoleum is a beautiful thing with mosaics. Guys, I can't, you'll hear the word mosaic about 400 times today in this video for a good reason, because you have unbelievable mosaics. And her mausoleum is definitely one thing you want to check out. This is the tomb. Now, the third thing you want to check out is the baptistry by the cathedral. Now, the cathedral itself, oh, it's a nice cathedral, but it's not, I wouldn't put it on my top ten list, okay? But you have the baptistry called the uh, Neo Niano, or Neonian. Uh, baptistry. Basically there's a little Roman bath in the center of it and they have mosaics all around. It's a really small building but it's beautiful with the mosaics so you should really check it out. And this is the baptistry. Very large bath. What's really fun. great is they have this combo ticket here, and you don't get to the Museo Nazionale, but you do get into uh, the baptistry, you get into a couple churches, you get to San Vitale, and it is really cool because it works over seven days. So, you, so if you're here on a beach holiday, you can get the ticket, come see some things one day, go back to the beach, come back another day, see some other stuff. It's great. So the third thing is the baptistry by the cathedral, okay? Also UNESCO World Heritage. Another UNESCO World Heritage site is the Basilica, I want to make sure I say this right, the Basilica di Sant'Apollonari Nuovo. Um, here is when you look inside, again, the mosaics, okay, 500, 600, you know, from 500, 600, um, uh, AD, sorry, yeah, AD. Um, inside you have procession of kind of like apostles and saints, well, saints on one side and virgins on the other, and they're all walking towards the pulpit. And it's funny because the pulpit's nothing special, but the mosaics on the side walls are really fantastic, okay? This is inside the Nuovo. The 
So that's number four. Number five is the San Francesco Church and Dante's tomb. You know Dante from Dante's Inferno? He's buried here. And they have the eternal flame where the oil comes from Florence to keep it going all the time. Right next to it is a church that not a lot of people go into, but San Francesco's kind of cool because it sunk four meters over the last 1,500 years. Okay, remember Byzantine. This isn't thousand-year-old churches. These aren't 500-year-old churches. These are 1,500-year-old churches. Okay? You go in there, it's sunk four meters, and they've had to put two new levels of floors in. And what's cool is you can go underneath the pulpit, and they still have the original flooring there, but it's all filled with water because the aquifers come up, so there's fish swimming around, and it's it's really kind of a beautiful sight. Also, the the fathers that are there are very helpful. If you speak Italian, they'll give you the whole history. It's, it's pretty cool. And here's the water. It's all it's beautiful. Number six on our list is if you're tired of the mosaics, which you won't be because literally you'll be shocked. I mean, I'm, I'm taking my five. I was like, no, you have to see this. this is amazing stuff. But if you're tired of the mosaics, one of the nice things to do is go into the market. But you have to do that in the morning when all the star stalls are open. And it is kind of a cool thing to see with all the meats and cheeses and all the stuff going on and the people coming to buy their food for the day and all kinds of stuff. And if you're not from kind of a market town or a market country like from the U.S. or Japan, it is kind of a cool cultural thing to check out. So that's one thing you want to check out, okay? with number six is go to the market. Number seven, you want to go to the mausoleum of Theodric, okay, or Teodrico. Um, it's just past the train station, two-story mausoleum. Very impressive to check out, but what's really cool is actually there's a park around it. So if you have kids and you're looking for a little park area, they have play areas there. It's also good for picnics. Just relax, chill out, and just have some, you know, downtime. So that's kind of a cool thing to check out, okay? Number eight on our list is basically walking around the town. What's cool is at night, when there's not really many tourists that come here, except in August when the beaches are packed. Uh, you come all the time, you're walking down the, the shopping street, Cavour, which is kind of cool. There's bikes going by you all the time. Good place to rent bikes, so that's one thing you could do. But just walking from Piazza del Popolo, which is a really kind of pretty square, down Cavour, all the way the shopping stuff, you know, you can see, you know, the locals live, and that's really kind of a cool thing to do. Number nine, guys, can you tell I'm sweating? It's hot here. This is, Ravenna is actually a beach town, but you don't go, you don't get to the beach, right? it's not a, like an urban beach like Rimini where it's right there. You have to take a bus, bus 60 or 70 will go to Marina de Ravenna, which is a nice beach, good for families, all kinds of stuff. You can rent an umbrella there, nice and relaxing, because you know, like I said, this is a history town, but also a beach town. So you can head out to the beach and have a great time, so that's number nine. Okay, number 10 on our list is what you should eat when you're here. Now, the locals have recommended two dishes for me to try here. One is called capaletti, which I've had. Uh, capaletti is basically like tortellini, but instead with meat inside, it has a cheese inside. And usually you have it with a ragu or meat sauce. I had it with a cream sauce because it was a little, uh, just the ragu, I just wasn't in the mood for it when I had it. But it is very good. It's a ri kind of a filling pasta. So if you're hungry, it'll definitely fill you up. And the second thing is you want to have a piadine, which is... I know, basically a piece of bread folded over and they put stuff in it. Um, and you want to have it with, okay, I'm going to try this, but I'm going to butcher it and you're going to make fun of me. Okay, but go with me on this. Squacuroni. Squacuroni cheese, okay? That's the cheese from here. And usually they say that the famous one from here is a piadina with squacuroni cheese, uh, ham, and radicchio. Okay, so that's the piadina you should have when you're here, okay? So, those are the 10 things you should do and see when you're here in Ravenna. It's a really nice town. I really enjoyed it. We, we thought we'd stay for a day. We ended up staying for three. They have a really nice bed and breakfast here. If you're, you know, not looking to party all night, but, you know, relax and have a really great B&B. There's a place called M Club here, which is really nice. But there's all kinds of great stuff to see in here in Ravenna. Again, the mosaics and the Byzantine. I mean, literally, this is a Byzantine blast, okay? You'll love it when you're here. It's well worth it. It's about an hour and 20 minutes from a Bologna. Hour from Germany makes a good day trip from both if you don't want to stay. But it is well worth staying because it's nice and relaxing. Beaches, all kinds of good stuff. So if you want to learn more about visiting Italy or Europe, learn a little Italian before you come or checking out the U.S., check us out at our website, www.waltersworld.com. And please, like and favorite this video, and we hope you'll subscribe. Ciao from Ravenna, Italy.
so one of the joys of traveling with your kids is that they seem to steal your silverware just like at home, but you don't get as many silverware no. options. So, you don't get quite get as many um, forks and knives as you'd like here. So a lot of times you end up eating your capoletti with a knife. So just watch out. And somebody else has got my fork. And just out of town you have the uh, Apollinare di Classe. <laughs> this is the uh, snow globe version of it. You have to take a train out here. You have to take the bus out of town to go see it. But it is well worth it for the mosaics. Uh, sorry I don't have any pictures from there. But this is the best I could do. <laughs> Definitely worth checking it out for something on the outside.